Hey, what is going on guys, Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you're all doing well. In this video, we'll be going over a new leak which has surfaced from the user benchmark database which contains a result of an RTX 30 series graphics card. So getting right into it, this leak was reported by Rogame and this was the first public benchmark result that included the RTX 3080. Before we had seen some leaks such as time spy scores but nothing publicly accessible with no screenshots provided either. However, since being posted, the results have been deleted from user benchmarks website and I'm sure you all can guess why. Now this leak confirms a few things for us regarding specifications. I'll get to clock speeds in a moment. Looking at the memory configuration reported and the card was reported with a memory clock of 4750 MHz, which is effectively 19 gigabits per second. And if you recall from my previous video where I discussed some leaks, one including the official documents leaked from Micron, who are one of the largest memory manufacturers and suppliers, they actually listed the RTX 3080 in their chart. They also had mentioned the effective data rate for the new GDDR6X modules, listed at 19 to 21 gigabits per second. And in the leak from the user benchmark score, this coincides perfectly. So this is none other than an RTX 30 series GPU with the new GDDR6X memory modules and that is what we'll be seeing when the cards are officially announced on the 1st of September. Now in regards to the amount of VRAM that was included, the reported amount here was 10 gigabytes. So essentially it's another confirmation that we'll be seeing the RTX 3080 with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. This lines up with another leak I covered in the past where both WCCF Tech and Igor's Lab had reported that the RTX 3080 would ship with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X. Now this could be just one of the 3080 variants, as there are rumors there could be two with one having higher than 10 gigabytes, basically double at 20 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Now what I'll say about this is is that I really had hoped we would have gotten a RTX 3080 with at least 12 gigabytes minimum. Not that it's desperately needed at the moment and 10 gigabytes should be fine for years to come, at least for the Ampere's generation life cycle, but this is going to be a high-end card, one we know will be fairly expensive. And considering the fact that we never really got any proper memory buffer upgrades going from Pascal to Turing, none at all actually, then I would have liked to see some higher memory equipped with this segment. The 2080 Super, 2080, and 1080 all had 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, I own both a 2080 Super and a regular 2080, both of which have 8 gigabytes of memory, and I've played games at 4K and 1440p. For the most part, I've actually never ran into any problems pertaining to memory for games as of now, but I have seen some pretty high usage getting pretty close to there, especially at 4K. It's one of those things that who knows what kind of negative implications they could have by going with a limited capacity route, but because games are getting quite complex with consoles finally getting beefed up specs, game developers will finally have an incentive to make more strides in gaming engines and design. Along with that, seeing newer tech like DLSS 2.0, ray tracing, and more, one would think that giving these cards ample memory would be likely. But who knows, maybe they won't need it and they'll probably be fine with just 10 gigabytes. Now the last part was the device ID, which we know 10DE2206 as the RTX 3080, so we know exactly which RTX 30 series GPU this result is for. Now the reported clock speeds here... The clock speed was recorded at 2100 MHz, which is definitely on the higher end when we take into account the usual clock speed ranges from what we have seen from Pascal and Turing. However, as I've briefly discussed in the past, we haven't really seen anything so far which indicates that Ampere will bring massive clock speed improvements, as some were speculating that the RTX 30 series would raise the clock speed figures to about 2200 MHz for the norm, and we'd see overclocks hitting up to 2500 MHz. But to be fair, those early speculation figures I had seen were from when people were under the assumption that Nvidia would leverage TSMC's 7 nanometer EUV process. However, as of recently, learning that Nvidia instead will use Samsung's 8 nanometer node, which really is their 10 nanometer process, just slightly tweaked, which is an inferior process, then I'm not surprised, as we have seen many reports as well as of these next generation cards having large power envelopes than their predecessors, then I believe Nvidia will be taking the safer route and not risk the increased clock speeds, as it will be pushing the GPUs out of the efficiency curve sweet spot. And this is further supported by another recent leak reported by Rogame, 
who had information of the base and boost clock speeds of the RTX 3090, and they were just slightly higher than the reference RTX 2080 Ti. Furthermore, back in June, we had Rogame on his site Hardware Leaks post some 3 d Mark Time Spy scores of an unknown RTX 30 series GPU, which had a reported clock speed of 1935 MHz. A frequency of around 1900 MHz is what you typically get out of a high-end custom GTX 10 series or RTX 20 series model. After seeing these leaks, if you ask me what I believe, then I'd say we're probably going to be getting another generation of video cards from NVIDIA which will have their base and boost clocks listed around the mid 1000s in a very similar fashion from what we have seen with Turing and Pascal. So for example, the RTX 3080 will have probably a base of around 1550 MHz and a boost of around 1750 MHz. Now we know that NVIDIA likes to keep their clock speed figures on the conservative side when listing them, and the cards even out of the box will boost much, much higher, typically around 1800 to 1900 MHz depending on temps, power delivery, and so on, without really the user having to do anything. I actually feel like this is the correct way to list specs, and it's the opposite of what AMD does. Because when you list specs that most consumers not, might not see, like for example, a 4.6 GHz boost clock rating on the 3900X, when in actuality, you'll only see that for like a split second when your desktop is idle, then, you know, that will piss a lot of people off. Whereas with NVIDIA, you'll have someone under the impression that while gaming, they should expect at least 1700 MHz and then see their card boosting to around 1900 MHz. They'll think, hey, oh my god, this card is fantastic. Not only does it give me great performance, but I'm actually seeing higher performance out of the box. Yay. I mean, if you're familiar with GPU tech and architecture, you'll know that this really isn't a huge deal, but to the average consumer's They'll be pretty proud of that because, hey, it exceeded their expectations and didn't underdeliver like some other hardware on the market. But let's circle back to what we can expect out of Ampere. And like I said, the clock speed ranges will be typically the same as previous gen cards, but we may see a slightly higher ceiling when it comes to overclocking. Now this user benchmark result of the RTX 3080 states 2100 MHz, and that is on the higher end side of things, where we typically see a GPU boost from NVIDIA. At 2100 MHz, this is where you'd have to be really fine-tuning your manual overclocks, have struck gold with the silicon lottery, or have to invest an upgrade to a better cooling solution. For example, my EVGA RTX 2080 SC Gaming that is in my PC right now, out of the box would boost to around 1900 MHz. Then I had put on a 120mm AIO with the Kraken G12, and I saw this card would boost to around 2040 and 2050 MHz. And then I had installed a 360mm AIO which drastically brought down my temps and it was only then I was able to get this GPU to run at 2100MHz stable. Now when it comes to this RTX 3080, here we don't have any information whatsoever regarding cooling solutions and whether it was an early engineering sample with lower quality silicon or if it was a retail level sample with quality we can expect from at launch. But let's say it's the former, then that would bode well for enthusiasts looking to overclock these cards with the stock cooling solutions as it could indicate higher overclocking headroom. So perhaps we could see 2100 MHz being the norm for those moderate overclocks and those enthusiasts who like to upgrade their cooling so solutions like water cooling for example. The card perhaps, we might be able to see it boost to around 2200 MHz, just maybe, maybe boost to around 2300 MHz. Now, playing devil's advocate here, one important thing to consider before you all get too excited is that when you run user benchmarks test, it actually records the clock speed of the GPU right at the start. So what this entails is that it's not really reporting the sustained clock speeds in the middle of the test, but rather when the card is just starting to see a load right at the beginning, and that doesn't really mean much, since at the start the card is probably just sitting idle at around 30 or 40 degrees Celsius depending on ambient room temperature, and then when it gets that jolt, that burst of workload right at the start, you'll see high clocks right at the beginning. And then as the benchmark goes on, the card heats up, you'll actually see the sustained clock speed figures are lower. So this RTX 3080 here could have actually been running at around 2000 MHz or 2025 MHz sustained, which then wouldn't really be all that impressive. So we need more information here, and I'm not going to be saying anything conclusive until we see more information or 
Perhaps we'll just have to wait until launch. This can really go two routes. The cards will have frequency behaviors in line with what we're used seeing with Pascal and Turing, or they'll be able to boost higher. However, another important factor I want you all to keep in mind is that clock speeds aren't everything. You have to remember that there are other areas from where the performance improvements can come from. Such as higher performance per core, IPC, microarchitecture upgrades, faster tensor cores, plus RT cores, of course, we've also got faster GDDR6X modules, bigger memory buffers, and so on, there's much more to take into account when gauging overall performance behavior. And as of now there's still a lot of information that we just don't have. Listen. If Ampere actually regressed its clocks but hit it out of the park with IPC improvements, then even that would be enough to bring considerable performance upgrades over the previous generation. It's why you see AMD can keep up and even exceed performance over Intel with their desktop processors, because even though their clock speeds aren't hitting those high 5 GHz numbers, they've got higher IPC, they have more cores, and they have a much better SMT implementation than Intel as well. There's a lot of other areas in the GPU where improvements can come from, so at the end of the day, I'm not worried about getting high clocks as frequency isn't everything. Now finally when it comes to the score, pay no heed, you can obviously tell it didn't get anything mind-blowing, but rather a very poor score. Don't worry about it, as there are way too many unknown variables here, early drivers, early silicon, etc. And so the software probably didn't even properly utilize the GPU here anyway. So that was pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.